Hey, what's up guys? John here. New York is an absolute hellhole, all thanks to Bill de Blasio and Andrew Cuomo on a mission for power at any cost. They're destroying the lives of everybody in New York City and they're doing a great job at it. What they're doing right now is, yeah, first they're reimagining education with Bill Gates. He's now going to distort and control the way that little kids see the world. And yeah, they're also pushing a new mandatory vaccination bill on the entire city. And the only way that you're gonna be able to get out of it is a doctor's note. But if they think that you're healthy, you're rolling up your sleeve and you're taking it. We're taking things that are, you know, genetically modified organisms and we're injecting them in the little kids' arms. We just shoot them right into the vein. Now, what's ultimately happening here as we step into a, a world of poverty and starvation in New York is people are losing so much power and freedom over their everyday lives and they're forcing people into these socialist-like agendas and it's only gonna become a natural transition as people have no other way to provide for themselves since businesses are absolutely destroyed thanks to these draconian lockdowns. In this video, I'm gonna cover also how business and real estate will never be the same. Please hit that like button. I wanna get this message out to a lot of people so we can stop these corrupt politicians and get New York back on track. All right, guys, let's begin. New York is already suffering a $1.4 billion deficit with tax revenue. John Jacob Astor, once one of the richest people in the entire world, said in 1858, before he died, that if he could live life over again, knowing what he knows now, he would buy every foot of Manhattan. That was before the world flipped upside down and the politicians are on a mission to seize land, control, and property from every single investor in the entire city. What I mean by that is AOC is saying, don't pay rent unless you can. If you can't afford it, don't pay. It's not a big deal. It's not mandated. She's encouraging people not to pay. And why? Well, because they're issuing a new bill and a plan to really just take the land from you. So how does this bill work? Well, if you can't afford your property, you have to lock into a five-year agreement with the city and they'll tell you how to manage your property, what you can and can't do with it. And if you still can't hold on to the property, you have to sign the deed over to the city. I'm gonna read it to you verbatim right off of congress.gov. Eligible purchaser. For purposes of this section, an eligible purchaser under the paragraph shall be a nonprofit organization a public housing agency, a cooperative housing association, a community land trust, or a state or unit of local government or an agency thereof, as such terms are defined by the secretary. So they're shutting down business, they're telling people not to pay rent, and then they're basically saying, well, I'm gonna come take your property from you due to the hardships that you're facing through my restrictions. And now the Democrats have a supermajority with housing, meaning that they're pushing for more progressive rules to protect tenants. What does that mean for a landlord? It means you're pretty much screwed because things right now are already really bad in New York with rent control and all of the protections they have with tenants. Right now, we're seeing over 67,000 vacant apartments in the Big Apple. You're seeing rents plummet between 30 and 40%. 60% of all co-ops and condos are unsold in the city. Then you add the fact that we have the highest vacancy rate in 14 years. So you take all that into consideration, plus property taxes these landlords are paying, based on two years ago, what revenues were then. Now that's probably about half of what they were collecting. So landlords are suffering in a huge way. No one cares in New York. All they care about is the tenant because if they say they care most about the tenant, what that then means is saying, don't give your freedom and power to the landlord. Trust the state, trust the government, depend on the government. And as people depend on the government, then that's how they gain their control. And so this is how they really manipulate the masses into believing that the government in New York is there to protect the tenant, when in reality, all it is is an illusion. And as tenants begin being more dependent on the government, the government is then gonna have more control over their lives. And they also wanna push out the wealthy that own secondary properties in New York by increasing their taxes. Senate Bill S44A proposes to impose a tax surcharge beginning July 1st, 2021 on the following non-primary residences in the city with populations greater than 1 million, i.e. New York City. 
one, two, or three family residences with a five-year average market value of five million or higher will be subject to a tax of at least half a percent to 4% of the excess market value above five million. Residential real property held in a condominium form of ownership with an assessed value of 300,000 or higher will be subject to a tax of at least 10% to 13.5% of the excess assessed value above 300,000. We're gonna see a massive real estate crash. I mean, huge, way bigger than 2008. And it's all intentional. It's all intentional. It's gonna be massive. But what is really gonna be concerning is how they're gonna make up for all the lost tax revenue because these landlords aren't gonna have money. So what they're now urging is to tax the rich, to pursue the rich. Well, the top 5% of New York earners earn 95% of the revenue. So if you tax them, what are they gonna do? They're just simply gonna leave. They're gonna to go to Florida. Carl Icahn, worth $20 billion, Florida. You have Ken Griffin, buying a spree of properties in Palm Beach, and rumor is he's going to Florida. David Tepper, $13 billion net worth, Florida. Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, all talking about putting a block of their company in Florida. And the list goes on and on and on. And it's, the reason is because Florida is a very friendly state for business, no income tax, and it's just a great place to be. And now New York, the real desirability before was the fact that you could fall over opportunity in the street and it was great networking, but now that networking is no longer there. So if you're not gonna be there to network and you're only gonna be there to pay high taxes and deal with the political system that's going to work against you and your business, it makes sense to leave. So as they push up these high taxes, what's ultimately gonna happen is the revenues are gonna drop even more. The desirability to be in that city is going to plummet. You know, if they really wanted the opposite, if they wanted the city to do well, what they would do is probably lower taxes on the rich. They'd probably offer them some type of incentive or some type of bonus to drive opportunity, jobs, money to certain neighborhoods. And they would do that by decreasing taxes and, and incentivizing more billionaires and more wealthy people to come in. They'd have more tax revenue for the city. And then ultimately, if they could work in certain neighborhoods and change the zoning laws, so really developers would be more incentivized to build affordable housing, then ultimately what would happen is more supply for housing, rents would come down, and there'll be a safer, cleaner city because they'd have so much more tax revenue. But why would they want to do such a thing? Because then when you do that, you're pushing all the freedom to the hands of the people, and then the people don't need the government. But the way that they're doing it right now is pushing out the wealthy, driving everything down, they're gonna seize all the land, and then ultimately control all the people. And meanwhile, all the people think that this is actually a good thing for them. It's ridiculous. Look at this stimulus package that they just passed. $900 billion. If you took 900 billion, divided it by 330 million, which is the US population, we should all get 2,700 bucks. How come we're all getting 600? It's because it's corruption. It's this lie that we're entitled to something for free. And none of us are. We'll never get anything for free. If they promise us a dollar for free, ultimately we'll pay back five. So it, this is just a really, really bad plan. And these politicians are going to destroy the beauty that is New York City. If you can't tell, I despise the mainstream media. It's all propaganda, lies, simply there to control you and get you to do things you otherwise wouldn't do. I went to New York two weeks after the lockdown with my infant son. He was six months old and we stayed right off Central Park in a luxury hotel that was 90% off. The hotel was 80 bucks a night. We were getting five-star restaurants delivering right to us. It was an amazing experience. New York was clean and it will never be like that again. And crime was at an all time low because everyone was afraid of dying if they go outside. So really no one was even outside. But what we're now gonna have is we're gonna have this massive land grab from the state. We're gonna have taxes increase. We're gonna have opportunities leave the city and things are gonna get really nasty in New York. But it's all due to these corrupt and shady politicians manipulating the chain of events that are happening right now in the world. So the number one thing that we can all do is realize that A, these politicians do not have your best interest in mind, and B, is we all need to wake up to what's happening because this is gonna be the biggest regret I believe people are gonna have in 2021, 2022, is trusting the politicians and everything that they're saying today. But with that being said, I do believe New York has a comeback story. It's just not gonna be anytime soon. Steven Schwarzman, the founder of Blackstone, half a trillion dollars in assets under management. He said that when he's looking for a bottom of a market, 
he waits until it bounces 10%. When it hits 10% and stabilizes, that is likely the bottom. He goes all in and starts investing then. But right now, what we're witnessing is a falling knife. We don't know the stupidity level of these politicians, how far they're going to go to achieve their dream of seizing power and control of every square inch of Manhattan. We don't know. But I, what I do know is that right now, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for them. And it's going to be very unlikely that they stop where they are right now because they're on a mission. And the only way we can stop them is by exposing this evil plan. And the best way to do that is to hit the like button so YouTube shares this content. The more people that see it, the better off we all are. And hopefully we can put a stop to this and get the world back to normal. This world that we have in New York, this beautiful, beautiful city. Let's get Manhattan back and let's get the state of New York back. All right, guys, please consider subscribing if you're interested in learning about personal finance, real estate, business, and money. I'll see you in the next video.